Artistic director Ari Roth was the pulse of Theatre J since 1997, until his quick dismissal on December 18, 2014. Since then, he has reinvented himself, forming his own theatre called the Mosaic Theatre Company, which will have its inaugural season next fall at the Atlas Performing Arts Center in Washington, D.C. I had the chance to speak with Ari Roth at his office at the Atlas Performing Arts Center. We discussed issues pertaining to Theatre J, as well as his new endeavor, the Mosaic Theatre Company. Thinking back to the very, very beginning, why was it so important for you to be involved with a theatre company that focused on Jewish culture? Well, it, it was a fortuitous uh, meeting, me and Theatre J of the Washington, D.C. Jewish Community Center. I had actually uh, known of Theatre J as a playwright first when the founding artistic director, Martin Blank, did a workshop reading of a play of mine called Oh the Innocence back in 19... 92. Uh, it was a reading. I didn't even attend that reading, but I knew of Theatre J. It was then performing in a 35-seat boardroom in Jefferson Place in DuPont Circle, uh, which was the old townhouse that housed the JCC. When the JCC moved back into its old historic building, newly refurbished uh, after 20 years of lying moribund and derelict, uh, I was moving back to town, uh, back because my wife had grown up in Washington, D.C., and we were moving here with our uh, small family. And uh, I stumbled into the JCC looking for uh, new work, really, and uh, I got work uh, at the Anlo Bronfman Gallery, which was uh, a gallery attached to the JCC as a researcher. Uh, it was not long after that they wound up offering me the job as artistic director as there was a vacancy with the second artistic director um, deciding that she wanted to spend time with her new newborn baby. And so I happened to be a, a lucky person on the spot. And so not only had Theatre J been a place that was interested in my work as a writer, the JCC as an urban Jewish community center was a place that was that I was interested in because it reflected uh, my own biography of growing up on the south side of Chicago, which was uh, holding on to an urban identity in an urban Jewish community uh, in the midst of losing a lot of population to white flight, migration to the suburbs. I really believed in the importance of an integrated urban Jewish community within a larger teeming uh, exciting neighborhood and uh, so the JCC resonated with me when I got there and it uh, was an open space there was, it was a new building uh, there was not a lot of programming going on there was a great film festival and uh, developing other arts programs it was a chance for me to grow uh, a theater and a vision for a theater and for me to grow as uh, an artist myself my background was in playwriting and in an education. Uh, I was a, a frequent developer of new plays, student plays. So, but I had to hone and learn my craft as a producer, learn what I was doing, learn about budgets. Uh, all those things the JCC taught me, but it also helped uh, nurture and develop uh, a vision of what urban Jewish culture would be and how that um, again, resonated with me as a playwright who had been working in that field, in the plays that I was writing, both about race relations, about German-Jewish relations, which mirrored my own biography and interest in history and European history, and then ultimately my own connections with Israel, uh, which were long and deep-seated. So all of these um, personal interests were allowed to grow and develop and find other participants at the JCC, we grew up together. So you were in the right place at the right time of your life to do this job? Sure, I took that job as a 36-year-old, really right in the middle of a theater career. And theater is a hard business to make a living at. I don't have to tell anybody that who's tuning in. Uh, I was you know, putting things together as a lecturer, teaching as a playwright, you know, it was some years making 
decent money with royalties, most years making indecent money on royalties. So I was also uh, in need of steady work and uh, the gift of being a producer is you can give other people steady work too. You can feed your family and you can help other people you know, put some food on the table while making art. And if it's art that you believe in, if it's art that's coming from a very personal place and resonating to a, you know, a, a moment uh, in time, in our community, nationally, internationally, then all the better. So, I, you know, I feel like I got very lucky, as you say, being in the right place at the right time and give, being given permission to build and have a mandate to build with a group of people something uh, that we really believed in. Do you feel that this was the right job for you at the time? Well, I mean, I, it, it, all I really wanted to be initially was a playwright uh, in the theater, uh, you know, an, an artist expressing a vision, but it quickly became clear that I loved being a part of a company. And if I wasn't going to be a part of Steppenwolf Theatre Company, or if I wasn't going to be part of Circle Repertory Company, where Lanford Wilson was the uh, sort of the lead resident playwright, and where I cut my teeth as an intern and as a literary director and as a playwright in their lab, but that had since gone more. You know, it had gone after 35 years. Circle Rep bit the dust. So I was trying, in a way, to build a new home for artists, and there, that there would be a place for me in that home. Uh, but I realized that that was a calling of mine. I didn't know I wanted to be a homemaker, but I, was, I became a homemaker. So what will you miss most about Theater J and the DC JCC? Because you were there for such a long time, and I'm sure you have some good memories about your time there. Sure. I mean, you know, you know we, can also, we can say the things that I didn't love were arguing about Israel, but I also liked arguing about Israel because... Uh, I, I believed in it, uh, you know, Israel, like the Jewish people, is an argumentative place. So uh, you might say I, I liked that there was a culture of deep engagement and you could, I mean, the JCC has 21 businesses in it, from a gymnasium and to, to, a, to yoga classes, to preschool and uh, adult education, to, of course, film and dance. Uh, and uh, on Sunday nights, you know, you have Israeli folk dancing and you've got uh, a music and literary festival and uh, a theater that's operating on all cylinders. Uh, I like mixing it up. I like an integrated center. Here at the Atlas Performing Arts Center, where you've got Joy of Motion, you've got Step Africa, you've got, uh, you know, the, a congressional chorus and uh, a symphony as arts partners, you've also got that same idea of many different cultural communities overlapping, intersecting with each other. And uh, that kind of mirrors one of the more exciting places I've ever been to, which is the lobby of the public theater in New York, where you've got people going to Joe's Pub and you've people going to five different theaters all operating, you know, sometimes at the same time. And uh, you feel like you're at a, a bustling intersection where uh, everybody is engaged in something cultural, but it's, you know, there are variations on a theme. So I think that's what the JCC does very well, is variations on a theme, all different ways of expressing their interests, many different uh, groups of people coming in, rubbing shoulders, and that feels like a, a very healthy kind of uh, interior culture. I mean, there's the great outside, you know, and you can have that sense of, uh, buoyant life uh, out on the streets but you know here under one roof a very intentional community of mixed uh, 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 you know mixed sectors coming together to uh, celebrate explore debate recreate I'll miss that a lot I'll miss uh, a staff where we worked in very close quarters extremely well together uh, I'm hoping to uh, recreate a staff I'll start very small Necessarily, and we'll see, you know, what it grows to. But um, you know, we were we were uh, a very close knit company of staff, of lay leadership, of creative artists, actors, uh, and um, you know, we, we we all had a common stake in something. So, lots of great memories from that. 
Now, now that you're at the Atlas Performing Arts Center, it's almost as if you're reinventing yourself. This will create a new art with, for you just by being in this facility. Well, I think that's right. I mean, I'm carrying over interests and uh, you know, some legacy. Uh, of course, this festival we call Voices from a Changing Middle East, which is really looking at a whole host of issues and populations and uh, artists uh, within Israel and uh, in Palestine and Egypt, Jordan. These are just some of the places where I have playwrights who have work that will be of great interest to me. That's all carrying over. But so, and some of the artists who have made incredible stuff with F. Theater J will be working with me here too. But, yes, it's a brand new neighborhood. <laughs> there are a lot of issues here that um, will have a chance to find their way onto a stage and into our conversations that we wouldn't have talked about at Theater J. Because Theater J really did make an effort to root its conversations with resonance in the Jewish community. Not everything was slavishly Jewish, but it, the, the inflection always moved back to how does this relate to us as a Jewish theater company. Uh, that Jewish component, which won't be completely effaced here, uh, then, I mean, I'm not going to forget where I come from, who I am, but um, the overall context is different here. And, uh, you know, we're part of a, an intercultural uh, convening here. Mm -hmm. We're bringing different cultures and different communities together to encounter each other, to check each other out, to become more aware of the issues that are binding, sometimes dividing us. Uh, so yes, you can move the, uh, the Israeli drama into that larger context, but the race and identity, gentrification, drama that's all playing out itself out right here is something we'll be looking at really closely. Great. Um, what are some of the unsung accomplishments of Theater J? Well, uh, something we've done a little bit of singing about, though it's not a frontline um, uh, you know, identifier, is our role in the local community. Uh, we're very proud, you know, together with Shirley Sorotsky and uh, Rebecca Endy and Delia Taylor, of giving birth to a program called Locally Grown Community Supported Art. Now, Locally Grown, uh, as far as I know, will stay very much part of Theater J. But the idea of producing local playwrights and you know, local mm -hmm. performance artists and giving work to local actors and directors and really celebrating our local culture doesn't belong to any one theater. That wants to be shared with the whole community and really uh, having a branding effort to promote locally grown pro uh, products and plays is something that I think wants to be shared. So in some kind of larger consortium, uh, I think Theater J will be a leader and Mosaic will want to be following in that footsteps of having a, having a commitment to producing local artists. Uh, you know, I, th I think the work with um, national pedigree of great writers and, you know, we became known in the middle of the 2000, the first decade of 2000, uh, of the 20th century, we were doing works by some of the great uh, authors of our moment, from Rich Greenberg and Ariel Dorfman to Wendy Wasserstein and uh, Joyce Carol Oates, Robert Brustein, Tom Keneally. That was an exciting thread of really established authors who were all working on world premieres with us. And, uh, you know, we've continued that with a younger generation of the Sam Foreman, Stephanie Zodrovic, Anna Ziegler. Those are all playwrights who will be continuing to you know, get work out, be, and we're very interested in them, and they've been incredibly supportive to me, and I think to Theater J as well. I, I have a sense that there will be authors that we share. Uh, Anna Ziegler, for example, is just is going to have a reading at, at, at Theater J in February. Uh, you know, both Shirley and I claim her as a wonderful friend, and those friendships will be shared. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to give you the opportunity to respond to a statement from Carol, the CEO at the DC JCC. Carol Zawatsky. Zawatsky. Uh -huh. 
Uh, she said, Ari Roth was not fired because of his politics or because of outside pressure. Ari Roth's dismissal related to a pattern of insubordination, unprofessionalism, and actions that no employer would ever sanction. That's pretty, that's pretty harsh. What, what is your response to that? Well, I, I was insubordinate about the things we disagreed about, which were politics, as they applied to uh, what we had already been give, given permission to pr pr produce on stage, but then were told we couldn't produce fully. We had a Voices from a Changing Middle East Festival that started in the year 2000 as the Voices from a Changing Israel Festival that just kept developing in, and growing in acclaim, in achievements, and uh, so I was insubordinate in refusing to accept an executive decision that that festival be canceled. So, so I think we did, and I, I was unprofessional in not slavishly obeying the communication protocols which said that every time I was contacted by the press, I would need to go to the chief communications officer to coordinate talking points with. I never did that. It wasn't my style to do that. I bristled at the tightening um, controls over how I could express myself there. I was unprofessional in not adhering to that discipline code and that's that's why I was reprimanded twice before my termination was the way in which I was not conforming to an ever restrictive code but I think that those were all of a political nature what we were disagreeing about it was there was never a reprimand if I talked to the press about yellow face about David Mamet's race, uh, promoting uh, you know, the next world premiere that we would be doing, working on any of my own play. It was only, we only chafed when there were issues of executive uh, restrictiveness on the content of what we were doing. Play in mind that I was working on and that was hoping to have workshop, a play called Reborn in Berlin, which was looking at rising anti-Semitism and Islamo-fascism mm -hmm. and racism against Muslims living in Germany today. When that play was kept off of the Theatre J schedule because it was threatening to introduce the Palestinian-Israeli conflict through a back door when the CEO had already declared that this season we couldn't have any conversations of Israel on stage. So that is why we checked, that was the nature, that was the root of my insubordination. Again, the word unprofessionalism was, wasn't because I came into work drunk. I never did. I don't drink like that. I never, came, I never did anything bad other than chafe, and sometimes vocally chafe at the restrictiveness on cultural and political content in our work. So what you're saying is, your response was that this was necessary in order to fight for your art. Well, that's what the 102 artistic directors who wound up all the first wave of 60, then 90, then over 100, and then local artists, and uh, you know, as well as artistic directors, all signing on to a letter that supported the role of an artistic director to publicly defend the work that he or she was producing and what happens when a theater company, and forget a JCC based theater, any theater company goes forward with a production and then a small pocket of the community criticizes it or mischaracterizes it or maligns its artists or maligns the theater that's doing it. How do you respond to those um, uh, criticisms from the community? So it is said by all these other artists, what they're fighting for isn't just me and my job. It's the right of an artistic director not only to produce according to his or her vision, but then to publicly defend the artists involved and the nature, the integrity of the work that's being presented. Who better than an artistic director who best understands 
the efficacy, the constructive contribution that a work of art is making. That's what I was fighting for. That's what they recognize as at stake. What happens if you go out on a limb with a thought-provoking work at a secular theater in the middle of San Diego, and then, let's say, some small component of the community criticizes it, throws eggs at it, says it's a hate-filled, you know, terrible play, and suddenly the board of directors says, nobody say anything, don't respond. The artistic director is saying, I have artists out there every night who are going to, who are putting themselves online. They need to be defended. It's my right and my duty. And, and as a member of a non-commercial, not-for-profit, resident theater movement to defend the work. And that's what I believed in, but that was not part of the authority, um, you know, chain of command. It's not the way the JCC wanted to work in this evolving culture that was there. So that's by way of explaining what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I do admit that I was insubordinate. Uh, I do, you know, unprofessionalism is all a subset of being, uh, yeah, I try to be respectful. I, and I do respect Carol Zawatsky. I don't think I was terminated in the right way. But, um, you know, I, I hope that we'll be able, as we were for the few years we worked together, to find other ways of partnering in the future on work that uh, really reflects our common values and vision.